Number one. I grew up in a town on the Gulf of Mexico. Our neighborhood was next to an absolutely huge field, and on the other side of the field was the Gulf itself. My childhood home was laid out where my bedroom and my parents' bedroom were on opposite sides of the living room, which is where the front door was. I normally stayed up late, much later than my parents at least. They didn't mind much, as I didn't get into much trouble just playing video games. Anyway, I had fallen asleep playing Super Mario RPG on the SNES, mid-battle and all, when I woke up to my dad calling me into the living room. So I got up and walked out of my room. Every light in the house was off. I called out, Dad? I don't recall the exact verbiage used, but he called me by name, and was calling me to him. The living room was completely empty, and as I said, without a single light on. I stood there, my eyes peering around the room, which was dimly lit from a nearby street lamp seeping through the blinds. Dad? Again, he calls out to me. This time, though. His voice came from beyond the front door. In retrospect, of course, something was wrong. But as a young boy being called in the middle of the night by their father's voice, my first thought was that he obviously needed my help for some reason. I approached the front door slowly, very slowly, partially out of confusion and partially out of grogginess. As I approached, my dad called to me again then again, and a third time, each call beckoning in a friendly yet urgent tone. I was within reach of the doorknob now. I stood there. At this point, I felt something was a little off. Maybe I was sleepwalking, or caught in some vapor of sleep or something. I paused for a few seconds to really drink in my surroundings, feel my environment so to speak. This gave me some time to truly take in the details. I was perceptive. I was awake. There was no mistaking it. Dad? Silence. Dad? Then I heard him once more. Stern this time, like he sounded when I was in trouble. Get out here. Now. Oh shit, it's serious, I think to myself. I reach for the door. Son, what are you doing? It was my mother, right behind me. Her voice, in contrast to everything I was feeling in that moment, terrified me. It was the most startled I had ever been in my life. But that record wouldn't last long. I replied to her inquiry. Dad's outside, calling me. I think he needs me. She simply said, Dad's in the bedroom asleep. This phrase is one of the most vivid memories I have. Just thinking about it has me covered in chills. The record shattered. This was by far the most terrifying single moment in my life. I know for a fact I wasn't dreaming. I don't sleepwalk. I remember waking up. I remember it very clearly. And then, right after that, was when I had first heard that voice luring me outside. Maybe that's what woke me up in the first place. I had no response to the bombshell my mother had just dropped on me. I was just emotionally exhausted by fear. You know, that sickly, exhausted feeling you get when you receive absolutely terrible news. I simply muttered, good night, shuffled back to my room, and laid there on the floor until I passed out from emotional exhaustion. I've never heard anything like that since. I've told this story for 20 years now the exact same way. It's one of the clearest memories I have from my childhood. I, of course, don't know 100% that this was a skimwalker. I have no idea what the fuck it was though I have heard that they do employ these kind of tactics to lure you into their sick traps. All I do know for sure, though, is that it was something. 
and it almost tricked me. Number 2 A few years ago now, I was out on a camping trip with a couple of my buddies, one of whom was of Navajo descent. It was just a few guys getting away from the real world for a while, escaping into nature. The first night was great. We set up camp in a clearing, had a few beers and shared a few laughs. Maybe one too many beers. The second night, though, is where things took a turn. We went to bed fairly early, since we were all pretty tired from the previous night. I woke up at around 1am, since I desperately needed to take a leak. I got out of the tent and headed towards the tree line. I finished doing my business and turned back towards the tent. I got a couple of steps, and that's when I see it. On the opposite side of the clearing, there's a deer, but it's walking across the field on its back legs, bipedal like a human. Now I know deer occasionally rise up on their hind legs, but this was completely different. This thing was strolling like he was heading to the office or something. It turns its head to face me, and it freezes. We're just staring at each other for what felt like an eternity, and the creature still standing tall. If we were side by side, it'd be towering over me. Eventually, I snap out of my trance, and start shouting for the guys to wake up, and this deer thing just takes off sprinting into the trees, still on two legs, letting out a horrific screech. That sounded like a little girl crying, but sort of corrupted, like there was static from a TV set in its voice if that makes sense. The two others clamber out of the tent, asking what the hell was wrong, and what that noise was. Now I know I wasn't going crazy, they had both heard it too. I explain to them what I had just seen, and my Navajo friend goes ghostly pale. We should go. He says, let's pack up and head for the truck, now. Me and my other friend are pretty freaked out at this point, and don't question his plan. I knew what he was thinking. I'd heard of skimwalkers before, only I'd always thought that they were just Native American myths. That was no longer the case. As we're packing everything away in the bags, he tells us more details about skimwalkers and how once you've seen them, you don't want to stick around for long. They'll come back for you, and they might not come back alone. We finally get back to the truck, but our relief's cut short when we see a dog by the vehicle. Now this is weird. What the hell is this dog doing out in the woods all alone? After what just happened, we're understandably on edge, but we calm ourselves down and slowly get closer to it. It's facing the truck, so it can't see us as we're approaching. But as soon as it hears us, its body goes as hard as a rock. It doesn't instantly turn to look at what the noise behind it was, like any normal dog would. Instead, it slowly turns its head to face us, before turning its whole body. There was something disturbingly human about its face. It had giant eyes, too big for its head. You know how a dog's eyes are just dark blobs? This one had eyes just like a person. You could see the large whites with the colored iris around the pupils and everything. And they were wide and defensive. Its face was frozen in that snarling position, brandishing its teeth. I don't know whether it knew that we weren't going to attack, but it simply backed up a little, turned and scurried away. That was it. We all threw our stuff in the truck, hopped in and hightailed it out of there. As we're driving, my Navajo friend says, Did you guys notice it didn't have a tail? We questioned what he meant, and apparently that was a sign of a skimwalker. We got back to his folks' place, and his father performed some sort of ritual on us. He didn't question our story at all, 
and we spent the night at theirs. The next morning, his parents refused to let us leave without taking a small totem-like thing with us. Allegedly, it would keep the things at bay. Seems to have worked so far. Though I can't help but check outside my bedroom window each night before I go to sleep, just in case they've somehow tracked me down. Number 3 This takes place in the Chuska Mountains in the 80s. My friend was about six years old and was up in the mountains for a family reunion. The cabin they were staying at was in a meadow with a stone well near the tree line. They spent the day doing the typical reunion things, i.e. three-legged races, flag football and whatnot. The sun starts setting and the family retires to the cabin. The older people plan to sleep in the two bedrooms and the kids would sleep in the cots in the living room. All was well and the kids were tucked into bed. My friend, Sandra, feels uneasy and is struggling to go to sleep. She's tossing and turning, unable to shake this really weird feeling. Suddenly, her feeling immediately turns to fear as she hears something big, something heavy, making its way across the porch. Sandra fears that it may be a bear looking for food. She could make out the shadow of something large and black as it passed the window. It's making its way to the door and she sees that the family hasn't locked it. Sandra watches the door, too scared to move or even scream, and she sees the doorknob rattling back and forth. Whatever's trying to open the door succeeds. The room floods with the most putrid and horrific stench, and she sees a large human hand make its way through the door. She finally summons her strength and screams for her father. Her dad runs in and sees Sandra pointing at the door. He also sees the hand and yells for his brother to grab the gun. Whatever was at the door runs. It was a full moon, and in the moonlight, they see the creature run across the yard. Her dad's brother, with a rifle in his hands, looks through the scope and sees the creature crouching behind the well. Sandra's father assumes it's a bear, and tells his brother to take the shot. He pulls the trigger, and hears the bullet ricochet off the well. All thought of this being a bear is dismissed instantly, when the creature stands on two feet and runs towards the tree line. They never saw the creature again. Number 4 this occurred in Maine two years ago when I was 18. Every summer, my family and I go to a camp in Dedham. It's about a three hour drive from my house. The camp itself is about a half hour from the nearest town. I've been going to this camp my entire life since my family owns it and have never had an incident like this happen before. I was watching TV in the middle of the night both of my brothers and my parents had gone to bed. I heard a noise coming from the kitchen and realized that our dogs needed to go outside to do their business. So I took my brother's two pit bulls and my Athen pincer, a tiny dog, outside after turning the porch light on. I walked around to the front yard and let the dogs off their leashes. It's so incredibly dark in the woods in Maine that the porch light really only illuminated the porch itself and nothing else, so I tried to keep an eye on them as best I could. I was momentarily distracted when I saw a wild bird out on the lake. When I looked back, I saw that the pit bulls were both looking at something in the woods. I couldn't see what it was, but I assumed they had seen a squirrel or a raccoon. It was then that I realized I couldn't see my little Athen pincer, Alfie, anywhere. She's an awfully small dog, and she's completely black. I called her name a few times, and heard some soft whimpering coming from the woods, right at the spot where the pit bulls were staring. I took a couple of steps in that direction, and called out her name again, worried that she may have gotten her paw stuck between the rocks, 
or gotten stuck in a snake hole. Suddenly, I felt something moving behind me. I whipped around and looked down, and it was Alfie. She had been staying close to me the whole time, I just hadn't seen her. So, naturally, I was now thinking, if Alfie's here, then what the fuck's in the woods? I took another step forward, and the pit bulls began to growl. They were slowly advancing, and were now on either side of me, looking right into the blackness of the woods. I quickly picked up Alfie, and began to back up very slowly. I'm not sure what I thought was there, but there are lots of animals out in Maine, and I figured that the pit bulls knew better than I did. Right as I turned around, I heard the absolute most bone-chilling thing I've ever heard in my life. Coming from the direction of the woods, I heard something call Alfie's name. It sounded as if they were trying to mimic me, but it was just all wrong. The voice sounded really distorted, and it almost seemed to wail. I freaked the fuck out, and ran inside with the dogs. My camp is essentially a log cabin overlooking a lake, and our nearest neighbour, whose family, lives at least half a mile in the opposite direction of where this thing was. I've no idea what was out in those woods, though I have heard of skimwalkers playing similar tricks to lure people into the darkness. Number 5 Last October, I was visiting my grandparents out in Shiprock, New Mexico. Many Navajo people, including my own family, are very reluctant to speak about skimwalkers, because it's commonly believed that talking about them attracts their attention. However, I grew up away from the Navajo Nation, and was very naive about the subject. When it came to skimwalkers, I was an absolute skeptic. My mum used to tell me a story about how back in the 80s, she and my aunt saw a skimwalker just outside their driveway, under a streetlight. She described it as a black dog with dirty fur, a twisted, noodle-like front leg, and these unnatural eyes with a soft burnt glow to them. Me, being my logical self, doubted every word, but I never said my doubts aloud. But these doubts totally changed last year, when I went to my grandparents' house. My family and I had just finished going to the carnival at the Navajo Nation Fair, and decided to call it a night. The house was close enough where we could just walk home in less than ten minutes. When we got there, it was around 9pm at night, and we stayed up past two in the morning, catching up about family affairs and the local news. It was during that time that I decided to open my mouth and blurt out the question, Hey, are skimwalkers real? You shouldn't be speaking about that, my grandma said, with almost a disturbed yell in her voice. Not wanting to push the discomfort any further, we all decided to go to bed. Now, the trailer is pretty old, and it was a really nice night, so we slept with the windows open and the screens covering them to prevent bugs coming in. Everyone had fallen asleep except me. Just as I was finally getting relaxed, I started to hear something moving outside. I get up from the couch and start wandering over to the kitchen window. All of the rooms have the lights out, so the only visible light that I can see is from the porch light out the front. I take a quick scan of outside. From the porch light, all I can see is the dusty ground, and the vehicles that my family drove, along with some old metal trash cans that stood beside the road. Looking for a good five seconds, I wasn't able to see anything, so I was getting ready to turn around and walk back to bed, thinking it was just a stray cat or something. Only having taken two steps, I hear what sounds like a distorted scream coming from outside definitely close by. Fear rising, I look outside again, and there I see it. A coyote-like figure was staring at my direction from behind the cars, just outside of the reach of the porch light. Only it looked absolutely wrong. 
and gave off an evil vibe just from looking at it. It was grey, with very dishevelled hair, and a horrific orange-reddish glow to its eyes. I noped the hell out of there back to the bedroom. It was at that moment I had also begun to notice an awful stench in the air. It smelled of rotting meat. I started trying to wake up my mum, whose response was, It's almost 3am, what do you want? I tell her there's something outside. Now annoyed, she then says, Ugh, it's probably just a stray animal. It's the res. Animals wander all the time at night. She obviously wasn't getting the drift of what I was saying, so I screamed. There's some Blair Witch Project shit going on outside, Ma. That got her attention. And then we both heard it. The thing outside started making more of those dreadful screams, and sounded as if it was thrashing around on the ground outside. Both her and I got up and looked outside the window, and the coyote thing was making its way to the front door. It walked with an odd limp and dragged its back right leg as if it was handicapped. We could hear it start scratching against the door and making this odd, muffled moaning sound. My mum went and got my dad, and they both started shouting in Navajo all sorts of words telling the thing to go away and saying it's not welcome here. Well, all this commotion was enough to wake up the rest of the trailer, and they all came into the hallway. The only thing my mum did was turn to them, and simply said, Skinwalker, while proceeding to point at the door. Apparently, they already knew exactly what to do, as my grandfather got a handgun out the drawer and a bag of ashes. He coated a few bullets in the ash, loaded them into the handgun, and went straight to the door. Yelling out more Navajo that was too fast for me to comprehend, he swung open the door and fired twice. Nothing. The thing managed to escape before my grandpa could even put a bullet in it. Next thing I know, my aunts and my parents are freaking out about what just happened, saying stuff like, What if it comes back tomorrow? It saw us, does that mean we're targets now? Afterwards, my grandparents calmed everyone down, saying we'll be fine, and to go back to bed. Morning comes, and my grandparents call over one of their neighbours, and explain to them what happened. Apparently, one of them was a medicine man, who used to partake in a Navajo ceremony, used for healing and curing sickness. He blessed each family member, and the grounds outside. Today, I'm very convinced that what I saw was a skimwalker. I still plan on going back to visit my family, and to return to the Northern Navajo Nation Fair. I just hope I never have an awful experience like that again. Hi guys, Lazy here, and thank you very much for listening. Again, something a little more paranormal this time around, but these skimwalker stories, you know, they're a bit different, and it's always good to mix things up, I suppose. Anyway, what are your thoughts on skimwalkers? Are they real or just Native American myths? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, smash that like button or I'll smash you, and I'll have another video for you guys very, very soon. So until then, stay spooky. And remember, the best things happen in the dark.